This Easter, try the newest game from Quizworks Toys, SWAP Swap. All you need is six players and six items. Take a quick look and then swap. See an item you want? Ask for a swap. They can't say no. But be careful, someone else might want to swap with you. Keep swapping until you can swap no more. Grab your copy of SWAP from QW Toys today. Hi everyone, I'm Chrissy. And I'm Kosek. Hey Kosek. <laughs> oh, hi Chrissy. Well, have you ever played a game where you had to swap something you had with something someone else has? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh Chrissy, I will swap this for that. Uh, this oh. for that? Yeah, yeah, for that. Come on, do it. Yeah, yeah I don't think so. Oh, you know you want to. Uh, take no. it. Take it. Come no, on. No, no, no. It's a great swap. <laughs> Here you go. Come on. Oh, come fine, on. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, maybe you've swapped cards with someone who has the cards you need. Or maybe you've swapped your flavoured ice cream with someone else's. Or maybe you've swapped bikes with someone. But have you ever wished someone would swap places with you? Maybe you had a science test and wished someone would swap places with you. Or maybe you had to climb to the top of a tall building and wished someone would swap places with you. Or maybe you got in lots of trouble and wished that someone would just swap places with you. Well, did you know that Easter is a great time to remember the greatest swap in history? <laughs> oh, you're right, Chrissy. Oh, Easter is a great time to remember the greatest swap in history. It <laughs> is. Because you can swap your empty chocolate wrappers for delicious, yummy Easter eggs. <laughs> yeah, Kozak, oh. that's not quite the greatest swap in history. But it is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, at Easter, Christians remember what the Bible tells us. And the Bible tells us that the greatest swap in history is the one Jesus made for you and me. Huh? What are you talking about? Well, let's watch this made up story, which will help us understand. Oh. Diana and the Swap. This is Diana. Diana loved tools. And Diana really loved helping Dad build things using his real tools. Diana's favourite tool of all was her dad's wooden mallet. But Diana was only allowed to use Dad's tools when Dad was with her. If Dad was not there, Diana was not to use the tools, as it was too dangerous. Well, one Saturday morning, while her dad was sleeping in, Diana thought, I want to build something by myself. So Diana headed down to the shed and got to work building a new toy box. For the final touches, Diana grabbed her dad's wooden mallet. But as Diana swung, the mallet flew out of her hand, across the shed, and smashed on the ground. Uh-oh. Diana knew she was in big trouble. She had disobeyed her dad and broken her dad's favourite mallet. Diana slouched inside. As Diana entered the house, there was Dad making breakfast. Diana stuttered. Um, 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 Dad? I'm so, so, so sorry. I didn't wait for you and I, I broke your mallet. Diana's dad was very upset. Diana, you broke my mallet because you disobeyed me. So now you have to sit in your room for one hour. Diana trudged off. She knew she deserved time out, but staying in her room was so boring. After sitting there for five minutes, Diana heard a car pulling up. Diana stood up and looked out the window. 
Diana's auntie and uncle and her two cousins had just arrived. Oh man, I have to stay in my room and miss out. But then she heard a knock on her door and her dad came in. Diana, I've come to swap places with you. What? I am going to swap places with you. I will sit here and you are free to go and play with your cousins. And with that, Diana and her dad swapped places. Diana couldn't believe what had just happened. She was free! While her dad was stuck in time out. Finally, the hour was up and dad was free. As her cousins were leaving, Diana ran to her dad and gave him a big hug. Dad, I'm really sorry for disobeying you, but thank you for swapping places with me. Diana's dad smiled and said, Let's see if I can fix the mallet. Then we can build your toy box together. And with that, they walked off towards the shed to build Diana's toy box. The end. Wow! Diana's dad swapped places and took Diana's punishment! Well, yeah, and remember, we watched that story to help us think about the greatest swap in history that Jesus made for you and me. Why, oh, so Jesus went to time out for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Jesus did something much greater. Well, hang on, what is this? Well, you'll see in a moment. First, oh, okay. what's on this piece of cardboard? Uh, Nothing. Well, exactly. You see, the Bible says that for people to live forever with God, even after they die, they have to be completely clean. They have to have obeyed God completely. They have to be completely innocent. Oh, I don't think my life would look like that then. Well, no, not mine either. I think ours might be a little bit more like this piece of cardboard. Oh, yeah. Not very clean. Well, no. I think we can all agree that none of us have obeyed God completely. None of us are completely innocent. Oh, you can say that again. Well, yeah. Now, I have two crosses here. One of them's clean and the other one's dirty. Huh? Why do you have two crosses? Well, because the Bible says that even though Jesus had done nothing wrong, he was put on a cross. Oh, even though he was completely innocent. Well, that's right. But in Luke chapter 23, we're told that another man was put on a cross next to Jesus. And this man had done lots of things wrong. Oh, so he was not innocent. Well, no, not at all. Oh, dear. But by the end of Luke chapter 23, we're told that this man got to live forever with God. What? No, 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 no. You said that to live forever with God, you have to be completely clean. You have to be completely Innocent! Yeah. So how can this man get to live with God forever? He's not clean. Well, it's because Jesus made the greatest swap in history. Huh? Well, see, the Bible tells us that Jesus, when he died on the cross, he was swapping all of the wrong things that this man did and taking them on himself. Whoa, whoa. And the Bible says that Jesus swapped his obedience his innocence for this man oh. so that he could live forever with God. That is a great swap. Well, it is, but remember, the Bible tells us that the greatest swap in history is the one Jesus made for you and me. Yeah, but, but how could that happen? Well, because the Bible says that what Jesus did on the cross was not just for that man. See, the Bible says that what Jesus did was he died upon the cross for all the wrong things that we do. Really? Really. And now the Bible says that all people have to do is accept that swap. We say sorry to God and we accept that Jesus swapped places with us and we trust him.
Oh man, now that is even more incredible than <laughs> Deanna's dad swap. It sure is. At Easter, Christians remember the greatest swap in history is the one Jesus made for you and me. Oh, awesome! And to help us think more about that great swap, let's rock out to this music video. Oh yeah, let's go! For all the wrong things that we do Then he swapped his death for life He swapped his death for life The greatest swap in history Is the one that Jesus made for you and me The greatest swap in history Is the one that Jesus made for you and me Is the one that Jesus made for you and me He's the one that Jesus made for you and me. Well, on Good Friday, we remember that Jesus died on the cross for all the wrong things that we do. Yeah, because now people who aren't innocent can still get to live with God forever. Well, exactly. But did you know that that is only half of the greatest swap in history? What? It's only half? That's right, because the Bible says that on Easter Sunday, Jesus swapped his death for life. Oh, yeah. He swapped his death for life. Woohoo! That's right. Now, let's... Let's watch this animation of the true story from Luke chapter 24. All right, let's do it! Swapping death for life, Luke 24. Very early on Sunday morning, some women walked slowly to Jesus' tomb. As they approached... Whoa, the stone! It's been rolled away! Quick, take a look. <gasps> it's empty! He's gone. What is happening? Suddenly... <gasps> why are you looking in the place of the dead for someone who was alive? We're not. We're looking for Jesus. He died three days ago. Jesus isn't here. He has swapped death for life. His what? Could that be true? Did Jesus swap his death for life? And with that, the women ran back to Jesus' disciples. Some angels. They said Jesus wasn't dead. He swapped his death for life. Huh? What? S slow down. We were just told. Jesus has swapped his death for life. Don't be silly. We all know he's dead. You can't swap death for life. Duh. But later that day, two of Jesus' friends walked gloomily down the road. I can't believe he's gone. I thought he'd be the one. As they walked, Jesus joined them. But the men did not recognize him. What is the matter? Our friend Jesus died. And we thought he might be God's promised king. But now he's dead. <sighs> Didn't God tell you in the past that his chosen one must die and then swap his death for life? Finally, the men recognized Jesus. Ah, it's Jesus! He's alive! So they ran back to tell their friends. <laughs> Jesus has swapped his death for life! <laughs> Later that evening, Jesus' closest friends were in a locked room. Peace be with you. Ah, it's, it's a ghost! ghost. <laughs> I am not a ghost. I am alive. He's alive! It's really him! He has swapped his death for life! God told you in the past that I would die. But three days later, I would swap my death for life. He's He's alive. Alive. Jesus, Jesus, He's alive. alive! The end! No 
way! Is that true? Yeah, it is true. The Bible says that Jesus swapped his death for life. Oh yeah! Woohoo! <laughs> now that is a great swap. Yes, it is. But the Bible says that it was an even greater swap than just Jesus' death for his life. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What? How can it get even greater? Well, because the Bible says that Jesus swapped his death for the life of everyone who trusts him. Oh, okay. The Bible promises that if someone trusts Jesus, they will live forever with God. Oh, wow, then you're right. The greatest swap in history is the one that Jesus made for you and me. <laughs> that is right. Now, swapping cards or ice creams. Oh, or, or rubber chickens. <laughs> or rubber chickens might be good, but Jesus, dying on the cross oh. for all the wrong things that people do and yeah. then swapping his death for life. <laughs> well, Christians think that is the greatest. Oh, I think so too. Yep. Although if I can find someone to swap this rubber chicken for my favorite yummy <laughs> pencil pie, then I think that would be pretty great too. Oh dear. <laughs> I think I'm going to go and see if I can find someone who'll do that. <laughs> well, I'll see ya. Right, see ya, Kosek. Well, at Easter, Christians remember what the Bible teaches. And the Bible teaches that the greatest swap in history is the one Jesus made for you and for me. When he died on the cross for all the wrong things that we do, and then he swapped his death for life. Woohoo! Well, if you have questions about this, why don't you read the book of Luke in the Bible for yourself? Or you can talk to someone you know who trusts Jesus. All right, see you next time. The greatest swap in history is the one that Jesus made for you and me. The greatest swap For all the wrong things that we do Then he swapped his death for life He swapped his death for life The greatest swap in history Is the one that Jesus made for you and me The greatest swap in history Is the one that Jesus made for you and me Is the one that Jesus made for you and me is the one that Jesus made for you and